Hi and welcome back to part 3 of my ML API tutorial. I'm SR Coder and in this one we're going to cover um, replacing the uh, network manager buttons with our own UI um, so we can uh, maximize on play and see a little bit more screen space and not have to use this menu. Um, it's actually pretty easy and hopefully this is going to be a short uh, video so let's get straight to it. We're going to um, just create ourselves uh, a new UI so um, I'm going to click on this UI and just going to click on um, button to create a simple button um, and then obviously go to 2D view and uh, double click canvas so we can see things. Now the um, the button right here we're just going to place them right in the middle of the screen because um, they're usually anchored to the middle anyway uh, so they're anchored to the middle so I'm going to make uh, one of the buttons replace the network manager um, start host and the other button replace the start client. We could, um, You can easily extend this and use the start server as well if you want. Um, just a word of warning, um, it is, I'm not going to have, uh, just to keep this simple, I'm not going to change this connect address um, inside of the, the, the buttons. It, it, it is possible maybe do that at the end um, if you're going to be using it across uh, different machines with a finished game. Uh, you would need to obviously uh, connect to a particular IP address in order uh, as a client in order to be able to connect to uh, a different computer and you need to know the IP address so um, we'll just keep it simple uh, as we can and get on with this one so um, I'm going to call this um, game canvas and um, the main button here we're going to call this um, host button so that we can keep things organized and you know what we're doing so this host button obviously the text um, should say something other than button so I'm going to say host game and uh, we'll just uh, leave that default. We can change the font size and everything. You can make it look pretty. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, it just needs to be really simple right now. Um, what I'm actually going to do uh, is I'm actually going to create a panel. And I'm going to put things on this. So if I click on UI and then choose panel, it gives me like a, a top level game object. Um, because I'm going to switch this on and off in code so that the buttons disappear. So we're going to call this um, game menu panel just so that we know what we're doing and this uh, host button is going to on the panel should by default be stretched as well so it'll be centered and stretched. So we'll just drag this host button onto the game menu panel. That way um, this game object can be switched on and off in a script that we have on the main game canvas. Um, the uh, host button I'm just going to duplicate so I'll right click and duplicate and um, this second button this will be my uh, join button or join as client button so I'm going to call this uh, rename this one as join button and uh, obviously the text for that would be better if it was uh, join game put a space between them here we go so um, I have my buttons already kind of set up. Um, what I need is a script for this. So I'm just going to create a new C-sharp script and we'll call this um, menu script. And then we'll open menu script up and get coding. So um, the menu script, what I'm going to take is, uh, I'm going to get this, um, I'll make it public. Um, I'm going to make a public game object uh, which will be the um, menu panel. Um, this is the thing that I want to be able to switch on and off after I've managed to click one of the buttons. Um, I'm also, I'll get rid of these ones, I'm also going to get um, a couple of the, the functions that we need um, in order to uh, hook them up to the actual buttons. So the first one um, I'll make, uh, we need to make them public so that the button can see them. So I'll make a public void and we'll call this one um, host button. Um, We'll just call it host actually. And uh, then we are able to access the um, the network manager. So um, I'm going to include using unit uh, ML API, sorry, ML API in order to be able to access this network manager. So it's the network networking manager and we grab the singleton and this is the instance that exists on the the scene so um, you, this won't work unless the networking manager is actually on the scene because it will access the singleton and we're just going to try and um, and uh, replace these buttons anyway so back to code so we'll access the singleton and then we'll uh, 
run. So this is the um, the host button. So um, we can say start host, and uh, this does have a few options. Um, we can cover those later, but we'll start by just the uh, basic default host. So we don't need to set a spawn point or anything for the for the player um, that is going to host it. Um, while we're here, we're just going to do the same thing for the client. So we're going to say we'll call this um, this method join. It's depressing when it does that. So I'm going to call this method join, and um, we do the same thing. We get the networking manager, we get the singleton, the instance of it, and we get the uh, start client method. Um, the two buttons now that they're um, created, we should be able to go back to our um, program here, and uh, the script should be put onto the um, game panel. Um, there's different methods of doing it that some people like to put a network manager had on there, but I'm just going to stick this, sorry, stick this on the game canvas. So this menu script goes on the game canvas. Um, the menu panel, um, we're going to hook up the game menu panel. This is the top level that contains both of these buttons. I'm going to hook this up to here and then we're going to um, set these buttons up and we need to remember to um, switch that panel off when we actually do it. So I'll, we'll show you how to do that in a second. So the um, the button, the host button, will just jump to the on click event, hit plus, find the game canvas and then we should be able to find the menu script in there and we should be able to have the host method. So this is the host button running the host method on my um, script. The join button, same thing, we just hit plus for the event, drag the game canvas on, go to the menu script and run the join method which will run this, the code in there. So uh, the buttons currently, I'm just going to quickly save this, the buttons currently won't disappear so we haven't written the code to make them disappear so in theory we should have this and I've dragged it on already you'll notice um, so we won't get a null reference exception but this menu panel we just need to disable it once we click a button so um, we'll keep the code really simple and we'll just say menu panel let's set active false and that will um, just make it disappear when we hit after we hit the button um, do the same one with that one so um, if I can spell I'll say menu panel dot set active and choose false and uh, save that code so um, yeah I'll just give this a quick test in this main one by uh, make sure everything's saved hit the play button and in theory, I did remember to put that on, in theory this should, um, if we click host, we should start hosting the game. Um, this gives us the option now to, um, if you want to, um, we can, in the game view, we can maximize on play, because we don't need to be able to access the network manager and find the button anymore. So in theory I should be able to, um, with this, hit the host game and I've got full screen, um, at least for part of it. Um, Actually, since we're here, the, the mouse is frustrating because um, it, it gets in the way. Uh, we do need it, but we need when the player comes in to just switch off. Um, so we'll quickly do that. So if you um, open up the player move um, script again, and we'll just find the start method in here. And if we're the local player, so not if we're the not the local player, but in this piece of code here in the else, this means we're the local player. We're just going to say um, cursor dot lock state um, equals, and then we get the cursor lock mode dot locked, and that will just um, uh, lock and hide the cursor. Um, it doesn't we should really have a method to to unlock it as well, but uh, this will do just as a, a quick a quick change. Um, the other thing that we can do, um, if you've uh, not had this problem yet, um, the camera that sits, this is like the, the lobby camera, um, we kind of almost need it on the scene. If I go to uh, scene view, we kind of almost need it on the scene because um, the uh, the camera kind of like has to, you need it, you kind of need a camera. If I was to delete this completely and we were to um, run the game, we would have a big message across the middle saying that the, uh, the camera, there was no camera to render. So what we'll do is we'll take this camera and we're going to stick it on the game panel. So it's still in the position that it, it 
it's going to be, um, even though it, it's now on a UI element. But because this is partly on, this is now buried away in the game panel, when we disable the uh, game panel, we're also going to be disabling this camera. So there's no chance that Unity will accidentally decide that it's going to use this one instead of your player camera. So just one last test and uh, we'll finish this video off and we'll do shooting in the next one. So we've got full screen and we can host a game. Um, we should probably test the other one as well. So if we uh, save and just put this over this side and pick up my other one, we should be able to test um, both of them in here. So if I also go to reload that one because I did make a change. Um, in the game view, this maximize on play is up. So this will be full screen when I play it. So I'm going to play here. We're going to uh, play over here. So I unplayed it. Uh, here we go. Play over here. And I should be able to host on this side and wander around. I press escape to get the cursor back. And I should be able to join the game on this side and I can wander around. And we can see that, that we can see each other in each other views. Um, so yeah, that's some real basic menu um, that we can we can use, so we can at least have some full screen when I'm showing you the rest of these videos. And uh, in the next one, we're going to do some shooting. So uh, stay tuned. Please like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.